G'day reefers, welcome to Gallery Aquatica TV. My name's Anya and today we're going to go through all about dipping corals for pests and nuisance algae. So most of the coral that we deal with comes directly from the ocean. Now what this means is that sometimes it can be home to a whole range of different parasites, nuisance algae and hitchhikers. So let's go take a look at some of the equipment that we're going to use to ensure we don't pass these on to the next person. So here are some of the equipment that I like to use when going to do a giant coral dipping session. Firstly, some protective gloves to keep your hands nice and soft. Next, we like to have some forceps within reach. You never know what's going to come out of these corals. You just never know. I like to use the snippers to manually remove certain things on the outside of the coral. Never forget having a towel on hand and just a spare for your face in case something splashes. And also, we like to have a nice range of scrubbing brushes, especially toothbrushes, so you can get in there and help with removing things like algae or sponge. So, when you're doing your buckets or tubs, don't forget you don't only need a bucket for the dip, but you're going to also need one to bath afterwards. So now let's check out the coral dips we have available and talk about why we use certain dips over others. So as you can see, there's a huge range of dips available to us on the aquarium market. It's easy to be confused as to which dip to use and for what purpose. For this reason, I've split them into four different groups. There are plant-based dips, which contain irritants that really annoy certain pests and cause them to jump off corals. These often will smell like tea tree or melaleuca and are quite effective at removing small parasites like flatworms. Secondarily, there's iodine based dips. Iodine tends to be very good at healing cuts. It's antibacterial and often can also be used when there's an infection on coral such as brown jelly disease. Thirdly, there are powders which are antibiotic and in America you also have Furan 2 and different erythromycin and different powders which are excellent antibiotics used for clearing infections such as when Recordia are melting. Lastly, we're going to show you how to use hydrogen peroxide at different concentrations to remove and oxidize pest algae. So I'm just going to put on some gloves, get a coral viewer and find some coral which we're going to check for pests to show you guys how to best use some of these products. So I've got about five pieces here. Some we're going to dip for nuisance algae. Look at this macro algae. <laughs> and some we're gonna dip for coral pests. start with one of our plant-based dips, Coral RX. We've got our bucket, we're going to put in some natural seawater from the main system that the coral has been taken out of. Our jug has measured two litres. Following instructions, we're going to put in eight drops per litre. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. One, Three, four, five, six, seven, eight. 
give that a bit of a mix. You'll notice with the plant-based dips, almost instantly you get this kind of frothy surface of bubbles. Looks a little bit like soap. This is very normal and a good sign that you've mixed up the dip correctly. We'll just jug in some more salt water for the bar. And we're ready to go. So we have here a beautiful gold colony of Montipora. I suspect that it has a little bit of flatworm on it. So we're going to use the Coral RX to help get that off. I totally forgot to talk about my favorite tool, the turkey baster. This is very useful for this task because flatworms can be quite difficult to actually remove from a coral, even if the dip creates an irritant. They're very, very good at being stuck down. So we'll pop this in just for a few minutes. And if you can see here, the first things we see coming off are copepods. I'm just blasting the coral with the turkey baster. I haven't seen any evidence of flatworm coming off just yet. You have to blast very, very hard to make sure these parasites come off. Some people like to do a shake. It's SPS coral that can work very well. It's been a minute. We're gonna pop that back in the bath so as not to stress the beautiful coral for too long. Next up, I have this zoanthid colony. Now, although it may have some pests we don't even know that are on it, why I've chose this one is because you see underneath here, there's a lithophaga burrowing mussel. Now, it's one thing to appreciate a bit of diversity in your live rock, but it's important to identify pests such as this and remove them as soon as you see them because eventually lithophaga mussels will burrow all the way up into the coral and really disturb the coral tissue area. LPS corals seem a bit more affected by this. While we're here, we've got a sea squirt. I can manually remove with my hands and also a little bit of sponge which we're going to cut off. So let's see what comes off in the dip. Could be any number of creatures within that rock. So upon visual inspection, it's pretty obvious this zoanthid colony is suffering from a range of macroalgae invasion. However, what kind of parasites are here that we can't see? We can see there's some sponge coral in the back, which will take off quite easily. But crabs can be lodged right in the depths of the rock. and other things like flatworms and polychaetes. And that's why we're gonna give it a dip in the Coral RX before we start on the algae. So I've just found a coral which has been stung by another coral. This is the perfect opportunity with which to use the iodine-based dip, which prevents infections and aids in healing. So let's mix up that iodine dip now. So once the iodine has gone from brown to clear, the bucket is ready to put the infected coral into. We're only putting it in for a few minutes and you can use your turkey baster 
to help blast away that rotten tissue and remove it from the healthy parts of the colony. If you're dealing with brown jelly disease with euphilia, you may find at this point that you can smell that rotten tissue. It smells a bit like rotten eggs. It's important to keep siphoning away that rot so that it's not having any contact with the healthy part of the colony. With this case, you could possibly always get your snips and manually remove the area which has been infected to clean it up. That smells nice and clean now, so I'll put it in the bath. Fortunately, there was no reason to use antibiotics on our corals here today, so let's skip straight on to hydrogen peroxide. So hydrogen peroxide will definitely remove nuisance pests off coral, but I like to use it to take off the algae. Dose rates are a little bit of a speculation because unicellular algae will be oxidized first and the macroalgae will take a higher concentration of HP with which to oxidize off the coral. So firstly, I'm going to start with 5 milliliters of hydrogen peroxide, 6%. I'm going to use my pipette to directly target the nuisance algae I want to oxidize. So with this measurement, you can see where the hydrogen peroxide is going and quickly you can see these little champagne bubbles forming and also, oh hello bristle worm, you can see how effective this is on this fine Derbesia algae but it has not done anything to the Dictyocoda here so we're going to add a little bit more as this is also our target with which to kill. You can see here with larger, thicker algae, like this Bryopsis, you have to target the hydrogen peroxide directly on the site to get the bubbling effect. Even though it's in the water next to these other pieces, this Bryopsis hasn't started sizzling until we put it directly on the area in question. And last but not least, there's a little bit of GHA here in the center of this Montipora. At this stage, when you start to see it sizzling, I like to use a toothbrush to help dislodge the pieces of algae. Oh look, bristle worms off as well. Using a toothbrush will probably help you conserve how much hydrogen peroxide is required. Same would go if you do a water change at this point and start again. The spent HP isn't able to keep oxidizing new pieces, so the more organics it needs to oxidize, the more hydrogen peroxide will be required. In cases where you're concerned about the HP burning the coral tissue, you can use a toothbrush to place the hydrogen peroxide directly on the frag plug and skeleton around the coral without touching the coral. You can see it instantly sizzling. It cleans it off so quickly. This coralomore is going to be barely recognizable after just a couple of seconds of scrubbing and then we can put that into the water to let everything oxidize. So you can see here in the dip bucket there's a variety of pests which have come off these corals. Hitchhiking polychaetes, Asterina starfish and even some little flatworms. Thanks for joining us for another episode of Gallery Aquatica TV where I shared with you some of the methods we use to protect our coral systems against nuisance pests and unwanted algae.
that's our video for today. If you enjoyed it, hit the like button, hit the subscribe as well. We'll be putting out videos every week showing a, a new tank with new products. There's gonna be lots in all the videos. I'm Cam the Fish Guy, and keep on reefing.